My name is Jukka Birtila. I'm a professor of economics here in Finland in, in University of Tampere normally. And now my, I'm on leave from Tampere. I'm a research fellow here at WIDA for two years. Oh, that's a difficult question. I, uh, after my uh, PhD, I, I started to work at the uh, Bank of Finland Institute for Economies in Transition, which is linked to development. And I, uh, and I um, started to apply my knowledge, which comes from the, uh, preparing the dissertation on public economic topics, uh, and then apply it to transition economic, economic context. And um, I have carried on doing some work on, 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 on both uh, public economics in the developed country context and then also uh, some development economics oriented research also when I, when I started up at the university. So I suppose it's, um, um, it's, it's a combination of, uh, of academic curiosity and interest in, 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 in if, if, if I can for my own small part help to uh, arrange things in, in poor countries. Oh, uh, since I'm interested in development economics and, and, and also fostering the development economics research here in my home country, uh, working for UNU WIDO is, is an obvious choice because of the strength of the institute and, 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 and the presence of the institute here in Finland. It's a unique opportunity for, for, a, for a person like me. Oh, uh, in, in many ways, the University of Tampere is, although it's a relatively big university, the economics unit there is, is really small. So, it's, uh, so, so if you take into account all the network of UNU wider, obviously UNU wider is, is much, much larger. Then it's international. Um, um, it does uh, somewhat different things because we are in, in involved in um, in, in, in policy advice and, and policy oriented research versus academic research can be, well, as you know, academic for its own sake. Uh, so, so there are many differences. Uh, and, and obviously, we don't have students enrolled to UNU wider. But we do teach a couple of courses uh, here in Helsinki at the Helsinki Center for Economic Research. So there's some interaction with students, but, but uh, uh, less than, than in typical university. My hope is to utilize my knowledge from public economics uh, and, and, and bring it to, to uh, use in development economics research. So it would be great to have, uh, for example, UNU wider uh, bigger research project on, on, on building up, up revenue raising capacity in, in poor countries, collecting the team of researchers working on those things, and, and similarly also on the, on the social protection side. Because many of these uh, countries are now in the phase that they are in a sense, graduating from the low income status to the middle income status, which means that the, the official development aid is, is, is going to be slowly uh, tapered off. And, the, um, and then they need to build their own revenue raising capacity to finance also uh, social protection systems. And that is the sort of broad topic I would like to uh, contribute to. I, I, I think the strength is that are, are manifold. So, so one strength is that the, it's part of the UNU system. So it, it, I, I think that has, a, has some special advantage in, in, in many developing countries because we are not one of the, one of the uh, Bretton Woods institutions as such. So that might have some baggage because of the historical reasons sometimes being different, difficult. And then we are also um, focusing on, on, on development economics research, which is uh, supposed to be very, very policy relevant, policy oriented. So it's a combination of academic rigor plus policy oriented research. And then, of course, there's, the, there's, the, there's a big network. So, so the, although we are not so many here in Helsinki, UNU wider is much bigger than the staff researchers here via its global network.
that's a tough question for somebody who has been working here for two weeks. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what I can what I can already see now is that we could have as a fin. I, I I could aim for uh, building up uh, bridges to the Finnish academic community, uh, so that we we already work quite quite closely, but but the linkages could be tighter as well. And and, and there's now a uh, emerging econ development economics research, for example, in, in, in at these institutes who work under, under the Helsinki Center for Economic Research, so all the three uh, economics departments here in Helsinki. Uh, so there are more people involved in development economics research at the Finnish academic side, and it would be good to integrate them as closely as possible with the UNU wider work. This is the type of question one is one doesn't ponder on a daily day, day basis. It is a it's a more deep uh, uh, philosophical question. But I but I think I'm um, I would like to use the academic methods to um, to uh, improve the way the the uh, government uh, bureaucracy and also the tax systems and that and and, and things like that work. So if I can if I can draw useful evidence on on how to, for example, build up good tax systems so that they are easy to implement and and, and also uh, don't interfere too much with the economic activities and are also socially equitable, then that would be a, that would be one broader aim, if you like. It was based on, on conference proceedings in a UNU wider conference organized a couple of years ago. And this is a selection of, of the articles and, 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 and the field is broad. But, but, but the main idea, I, I think, is that the earlier on development economics uh, saw people and agents working in developing countries uh, being fully rational. And, and if they did something in a in different way than people or, or firms in, in, in rich country setups, then that was mainly due to different uh, institutional uh, constraints or, or tighter budget constraints and so on. But nowadays, during the last uh, decade or so, uh, academic research has acknowledged, academic economic research has acknowledged the possibility that we are not always fully 100% rational all the time and our decision making is affected by emotions, um, emotions like fairness towards each, each other uh, and, and, and also uh, we, we might suffer from weakness of will that we, we, we would perhaps like to say more than we are in the end able to, able to do. And now it's the, the view is that the uh, likewise uh, People in the in the in the developing countries and, and 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 developed countries are likewise affected by these, if you like, behavioral constraints. So so it, it it's acknowledged now that these these constraints uh, are are there, but they ha can have a different bite in different circumstances, and that is the sort of broad agenda that uh, behavioral development economics is 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 is, is trying to work on. Experiments, especially randomized control experiments, have had a, a major influence on especially behavioral economic development research uh, because people have tested new theories based on those. And I, and I think they've been certainly useful, but on the other hand, they are not the only acceptable way to do research. So uh, many other things, um, uh, many other methods also need to be um, utilized because not all things and or not all interesting research topics are such that they could, um, that, that one could build up a, a randomized controlled trial to test the theories. But they have certainly been and have become part of the, um, the toolbox nowadays. And with respect to theorizing, I, I think uh, there's still more room to build more insights on the, 
on the theoretical models based on uh, uh, psychological research and also social psychology. Mm -hmm.